Web Show right here on HWWS Web TV. That's right, I'm GW Pometer, and we are here in Melbourne, Florida, and we are hanging out right now with author Malcolm Macy. Massey? Massey. Massey. Malcolm right. Massey. All right. Uh, Malcolm is the author of Mystery of the Maltese Venus. Venus. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's the seventh one in the series. Oh, wow. That's the most recent. That's um, fantastic. We got yeah. these right down here. We're going to go over here. Real quick, guys, uh, with a little housekeeping, I want you to go ahead and hit subscribe because we need you to come back over and over again. We have got authors, artists, filmmakers, musicians, creative minds of all kinds sitting in the chair, sitting on the set, having a great time. We want you to never miss one, never miss one. So smash the little notification bell and come back over and over again. Malcolm, um, this is the seventh one in the series. Seventh novel in the series. Seventh novel in the series. What is the, let's start at the beginning. What is the series? The series is the Martin Culver series. The Martin Culver series, okay. Average guy, lives in Virginia, finds his brother and father missing after a fishing trip, and all they know is lightning struck the boat and a Cuban vessel picked them up. Uh, that's called Holiday in Havana. Okay. And that gets everything started. And that, um, this just kind of gets us, jumps us right in, right? Gets, gets rolling. What ends up is a series and of Havana, traveling. Havana, Malta, I'm, I got a globe trotting feel here. Well, um, they go to uh, Panama, uh, they go to Peru, they go to Mexico. I've only lived in two of those three places. Uh, before it ends up going to Europe, uh, it's interesting, today's the solstice day. They end up in, at Stonehenge at one point. Uh, tracing artifacts that are bought and sold and moved during times of conflict mm. to perpetuate war and conflict. My character gets the idea early on that he can interfere with the whole peace conflict scheme in the world by stopping the trade of these items because he lucked into it the first time in the first book. Um, that's an interesting. It's, it's the the uh, that's an interesting concept. The idea that it, it I think one of the things that makes it interesting is it's is it something that's being talked about now. The importance of historical artifacts, uh, be they literature, art, uh, or or relics. Right. Uh, the the value that we place on these artifacts, and particularly in times of conflict. Um, and the idea of using that to create or, or you know, to stop or to create or to perpetuate your own agenda mm -hmm. by the manipulation of these artifacts. And it, and it goes on daily. Museums are complicit. Traders are complicit. Uh, people who, who buy and sell and auction. Um, in the mystery of the Maltese Venus, part of the Venus uh, concept that, that comes in, our main character realizes that the same people that move artifacts and weapons move people, and the human trafficking aspect comes in, um, where large meetings, conventions, uh, not worldwide. entirely untrue, by the way. If you guys follow the news and the stories and things like that, uh, the, the 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 trade of people, uh, narcotics, drugs, has been tied very closely to art and museum relics, and mm -hmm. you know the the cultural items yep. uh, tied very closely to that circuit, if and, you and will. And it's, it's kind of tragic. I don't bring it up to, to glorify it in any sense. Yeah. Uh, what I do is I bring it up to point out, I, I can't count how many times a fan or a reader will say, I didn't know that. I looked that up. I stopped and I spent some time looking that up so I could educate myself on what is it you're talking about and what yeah. have you pointed to here? Um, and that usually comes out of the research for the book. So That's fantastic, man. Um, what spoke to you? I, well, first of all, let's, let's back up one step past that. What do you, I mean, you did a lot of research for these books, and you yes. did find out that the, the manipulation, the trade of artifacts and artworks and, and culture um, does play a vital role in, in world affairs. Yes. Um, where did that hypothesis come from? Where did you, when, when did it first kind of pop into your head, and why do you think it is that, that our fascination with our history and our culture um, is so strong. So I lived in Bolivia. Okay. And one of the sayings in Bolivia is that the Spanish took enough silver out of Potosi Mountain to build a bridge to Madrid. Why did Spain need silver? They were fighting England. And that developed the concept, but I really didn't branch it out effectively until the second book. Um, and that was the Lost Ark of the Incas, mm -hmm. which there wasn't one. But when you're writing fiction, you can. 
We can uh, make stuff up. Yeah. Um, but they came in then, the Spanish, and said, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to create religious artifacts to fool people, and we're going to take the value out of this society for ourselves. And that started a, a twist on things. It's not just for war. Then it's about power and control. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's where it really took off. Well, there, there is, there, there's something to be said for, you know, he who holds an artifact or an item, um, at, there's always been this sense of mysticism about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the church maintained power for centuries and centuries now. And much of the time during different periods, because of their possession of what they would declare as a piece of the cross, right. uh, the Holy Grail per se. The, these are the ar these artifacts, right. possession of which gives you a, 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 a legitimacy. You could probably build bridges with the, all the pieces of the cross if you put them together. If you put them together, to somewhere, yeah. You know, somewhere, the, the, yeah, because there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of, I, and I know it's particularly like this in, in the uh, South America, Central America area, uh, you know, all these churches have a, a relic that they're yes. kind of centered around, mm -hmm. whether it be a piece of the cross or, a, a, you know, a piece of cloth or something. A goblet, they, an a art, go, yeah, art, an art artifact. Object, yeah. And they take this art object and they build um, a, an entire congregation around I possess this, and that makes me special. Right. The, um, um, the aspect of what happens with, with people in these situations is, I believe every crisis creates clarity. People get to decide what they think. Mm -hmm. What side are they on? Uh, where do they want this to go? And so uh, that's, you know, it's not being preachy. It's just everything that happens with you is something either to repeat or to never let happen again or somewhere in between. Um, but that's, that's kind of where it goes. I, I think that part keeps me going as much as anything. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be tapping into a current trend, too, with all these countries that, that want their artifacts back and deserve them back. Um, I actually fictionally created a foundation in my books that stands for certain principles of how to resolve this situation and how to uh, account for it with these countries that own things that weren't theirs originally, and how to get those back where they belong. I was going to say, how do you, you know, it, 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 because it's it's such an ingrained issue in your books, um, it, it runs the back, you know, the back thread of this whole thing is, you know, who should possess these artifacts? Um, you know, yes, possession gives you power, gives you, you know, uh, validity. Mm -hmm. But who is the valid owner of a lot of these objects or whatever? How do you how do you look at something when you make a fictional object like the ark, the uh, the Incan ark? Uh, you take a fictional object. Now, how do you determine who the rightful owner of a, of an artifact is in a civilization when a civilization is dead? Is it a geographic thing? Is it a descendancy thing? Because like Central Central America in particular, most of the cultures with the with the most valued artifacts are dead cultures. Right. So, and the Spanish certainly don't have claim to an artifact that the Incas made, right. yet Central America is a Hispanic uh, community. So how do you decide? So my archeologist um, who came in in the second book, they, they hired an archeologist for this foundation. Um, he recommends originally that it be geographic, but now as they're moving along, we have the ability to test gold to see where it came from, to see where it originated out of the ground and match it up. Um, so it's moving towards that. It still moves towards original, um, and, and archaeology works with context. Where did it come from? What's around it? Mm -hmm. What does it relate to? One of the concepts that comes out of these is what is there to learn from these things in their original location, and if the items were together, could we learn more? Or once they're scattered, are the lessons lost? Mm. Uh, there may be, there were warnings in, in some of the text. Some of the text was as simple as a receipt complaining about the quality of copper. Um, but some of it, and that's cuneiform clay tablets uh, yeah. out of Sumer. But then you have uh, situations where uh, they're giving warnings, not necessarily like the Mayan apocalypse, but you know we had this disease. Our climate had been this. This was the result. These were the ones that survived. That type of information, once it's picked, pulled, and scattered, uh, that information is lost to us today. Mm -hmm. Well, because when we put it, when we're putting it back together from a distance, yes, we, uh, 
interpret the spaces in between. Yes. Uh, and you end up with something as, as innocuous as, say, the Mayan calendar, which is just that. It's a, it's a 6,400 year old calendar, mm -hmm. but it's a secular thing. Right. So the end of the Mayan calendar simply was the beginning of the new calendar. Right. That's, that's a simple process. However, when you remove all of its pieces and parts and you let us put it together from a distance, mm -hmm all of a sudden that's where have, speculation comes in yes we have this this moment uh, this space in between that we fill with imagination and wonder and sometimes we we dream dark yeah so that's like right. i said the end of the mayan calendar everybody was like it's the end of the world wait wait no no it's the it's, it's like coming it's like december 31st is the end of the world no 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 december 31st is the beginning of the next year right not the not the end well i lived in mexico when i wrote the, um, the uh, lost calendar of the maya and I had to write it because my birthday is December 21st. Ah. Um, but we would go to these conferences about it, and we, you have to give your ID. And they would pass my ID back and forth, December 21st, December 21st. You know, they were passing it back and forth like it was significant somehow. But they knew that it was significant from a tourism standpoint. Um, but that's really all it was. Um, they, they had countless reviews in the papers um, in the Yucatan. Um, mine elders saying this is not a thing. This is not really a thing. This well, it's, is, a, you know, it's a calendar, guys. Right. We have a, an annual calendar, mm -hmm. and, and when you're charting things that are more universal, stars and, and planets, um, an annual calendar is virtually useless because not, things don't happen on a cosmic level That's in right. a year. Right. So it takes time to see where these things are happening. And so it, it, I, always, I always wondered where the jump came. It wasn't until I became a fiction writer that I realized where the space between two facts is a place that we fill with our own person. I think it's our own personal uh, background, limited as that may be, and then the speculation of, well, maybe it's, you know, and you go to dark. Yeah. You, don't, you don't generally go to, oh, well, it's, you know, that's, that's probably the beginning of something great. You know, yeah, yeah, you no, know. we never do that. No, no. I mean, we could do that, but it's... I think for I think for a lot of and, and it's it's what makes your books probably work is there's conflict mm -hmm. there's conflict there's a story in there we thrive in that environment how would I handle what would I do I have to tell you the story a Latin teacher in Virginia who uh, bought my first six and she was coming to the uh, the launch of the seventh one she said uh, what does your she said Martin Culver your main character she said so Martin God of War Mars the God of War she said I know where that's from what is Culver she said, have you researched it? And I said, no, but I'll know by the time we do the book launch. And so it came to the book launch with the information. Culver is from an old English word, kufre, which was a term for peaceful or dove-like. So his name is actually war and conflict. Uh, All in one. Built it. I didn't know that when I started this. But, uh, but, it, it, but it has a powerful attraction to your reader probably. It does. They don't even know why. Mm-hmm. But it does, because those are classic forces. Uh, thank you so much, Malcolm, for sharing uh, for your time. story. Um, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, she's flashing that card. You all know what that means. Malcolm, that's the shut up card. Okay. Uh, I don't know why, but it is. So Thank we're you gonna, to you and your audience. Thank you so yeah, much, guys. Great. We're going to thank our partners and our friends at Famous Faces and Funny Space Coast Comics, J. Bauer Art, for all the art that's on our set uh, this weekend. Uh, thank you to Brevard Film and Talent for helping us become better filmmakers and better YouTubers. Thank you to Mommy and G Creations for making our merch. Uh, thank you to all of you for tuning in and logging on. Keep tuning in. Keep logging on. See who we're hanging with next. Awesome. Thank okay. you so much, man. Thank that you, is man. awesome. Okay.